Man, I just want to go to bed. I'm tired from school and work. But what if those paranormal things don't let you? Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, not because you have to sleep, but because you better hide. Bedtime. In my brother's house, it's only the three of us who live there. My aunt, me, and a ghostly lady who sometimes sits on my bed at night and taps her foot to make her presence known. In Houston, my brother has a humble home with a ghostly friend we all know about. A lady who was robbed and murdered near the main entrance of the home. I have been staying at my mother's home for a month. I sometimes visit my parents and stay months with them. I only stayed a month and was ready to go back to my brother's home. The first night that I went back, everything was okay until until 11 p.m. All the lights went off, a total blackout at the house and when, when I went downstairs to question my aunt, she replied, it's that lady who is messing with us. All our neighbors still have electricity. When we entered the kitchen to peek through a window, we noticed that the only house in the dark was ours. There was nothing wrong with the fuse box because our oven still had the time lit up. When I asked my aunt how she was sure it was the ghost lady, my aunt confessed the following. Four days ago, when she arrived home alone in the afternoon, she noticed that the ceiling fan was in the living room, was shaking really violently but she couldn't comprehend why when all the doors and windows were shut. There was no wind or any explanation to explain the violent shaking. Even though it was unusual, she shook it off and went about feeding the dogs. At about 10.30 p.m., she was watching television when she began to hear noises upstairs. What kind of noises, I inquired in the darkness, with my brown eyes wide opened. Loud noises that sent chills not down my spine but all over my head. Like if someone was pricking me with a needle all over my scalp. It sounded like someone was upstairs moving furniture. Upstairs we have an entertainment room with a television and two comfy large sofas. One of the sofas is a love couch, a coffee table in the center, and I'm sure the point is clear. She continued expressing to me that she had stepped out of the way into the hallway and switched on the hallway light near her room to hear the noises clearer. When all of a sudden, she heard what sounded like someone picking up the love couch and slamming it against the wall. That frightened her so much, my aunt started to walk towards the main entrance to get out of the house when... Blackout. The light in her room and the hall turned off and the house was in complete darkness. My aunt says she ran out of the house so fast she could have won an Olympic gold medal. She sat on the sidewalk and called my mom to explain her supernatural encounter. And the only advice my mom could give her was, What's the big deal? You know it's a ghost lady, go back in the house and go to sleep. My super brave aunt did. There's no way in the world I would have gone back in that house that night. And what's really painful about this situation is right now it's 10 p.m. At night, we have to turn off the lights like we're little girls with a bedtime curfew. Because if we don't, at 11 p.m., our ghost lady makes sure she does. And believe me, it's sad. Toddler sees things that frighten him. My son is almost three years old. About two months ago, he started screaming off and on during bedtime, saying that he sees birdies. At first, we thought this was a ploy to stay awake longer, but the way he cried definitely had a terrified tone to it, not just a pretend cry. Sometimes it will happen before he falls asleep, sometimes it will happen during the night. He does experience night terrors from time to time. But I definitely know the difference and his behavior is quite different in these two events. These birdies 
seem to scare the daylights out of him, and he begs us to tell them to go away. Sometimes we have to tell them several times to leave, but it seems they do. And then he goes right to sleep and is fine. His eyes also follow the birdies around the room. Now, the situation has evolved more because yesterday, my son, myself, and my other son were snuggled in bed in my room, and my son kept saying, scary. We asked him what was scary, and he said, scary girl. We asked him where is the scary girl, and he pointed to the corner of my bedroom. This was in the middle of the day, and he was wide awake. Here are the other details to consider. I saw ghosts when I was a child. I remember it very vividly. It happened more than once and it terrified me. My grandmother saw visions and had psychic dreams. Her father had various psychic abilities, which included being able to make objects move. I never saw this as he passed before I was born, but my father and several family members claim to have witnessed it. I also have a five-year-old niece that claims to see scary people. I have felt uneasy in this house, like someone is watching me, and strange things do happen here such as loud noises, doors opening, etc. I am very concerned that my son is seeing ghosts or angels and spirits, etc., and I don't know what to do for him. I'm not sure if this is just a child's imagination. My mother is concerned he has a mental illness. I would really like to hear from others that have knowledge of similar events and get some feedback. Quite frankly, I'm freaking out. Bedtime Visitor About a year ago, my husband and I were getting ready for bed, and after we turned off the lights, I just had the strangest feeling someone was watching me from the doorway. I tried to shake it off, but just could not. I stayed awake for about a half hour or so, and as soon as I finally closed my eyes, I could feel the covers become very snug from my neck to my feet, like someone was lying on me. I tried to move but could not. I tried to speak but could not get anything to come out. Also, before that night, I could just feel a presence in our house. Lately, it feels a little better, and I don't feel like someone is watching over me as often. I have always been somewhat of a believer in the paranormal, and after that happened, I really believe. I have also had two dreams of my grandmother. The first one, that... She appeared to me and just said, I wonder where you went. Then she turned into a dove and disappeared. This happened right after she passed and I moved from North Carolina to another city. The second dream I had about a year later was a long discussion with her and she told me that she was in heaven and with my grandfather and was very, very happy. Every question I asked her, she answered with a smile on her face. And just like the first dream, she turned into a dove and disappeared. 